Hello there. Welcome to the Sunny Bray Rink Ruins. Say that 10 times fast. Off of Donald Avenue in Moncton. Uh, that berm you see up the top, that's a railway track going by. And uh, Some Monctonians know what this is, what it was, uh, but a lot of newcomers, people coming through on the train, uh, either don't know what it is or they presume it's some sort of a railway roundhouse or something like that. Um, but really it's landlocked and there's no there are no uh, tracks around here. So what it actually was, was an arena, a rink. Um, it was called the Sunny Bray Rink, the Sunny Bray Arena, uh, built of concrete in, uh, if completed in 1922. Uh, R.C. Donald uh, started this uh, idea. He actually was a, a, um, a contractor that really was a proponent of the use of concrete. And uh, he had this idea for a rink. Uh, he lived in the area and uh, it, became, it was a private enterprise and he wanted investors and there eventually were a few investors that created this rink. The whole thing was to be made of concrete, the circle as well as the conical roof. And he made a smaller model of this and actually would go downtown and to try and get people to get interested in it and to invest in it, he would actually stand on the point of that and show how strong concrete would be. So they started to build this amazing piece of, of engineering. And really, it was almost complete. And the inspectors came in and they noticed crack, a crack forming around the whole circle of the roof and said, nope can't do it. You're going to have to tear that out and you're going to have to put a, a wooden roof in. So before it even opened, that's what happened is the roof came down and they built a wooden roof. Uh, and the story is that the concrete that was used in that original roof became some of the bedrock for Donald Avenue. I would love it if the city uh, engineers or work crews, public works, if they ever do work on Donald Avenue, if they ever come across odd old chunks of concrete I would love to know about it just to guarantee that but that is the story that they did have to dispose of that and that was the, the closest uh, street or closest use for concrete so this beautiful amphitheater indoor rink at the time was the largest natural ice surface in Canada it was the largest indoor rink in eastern Canada. It was a big deal. And Harry Smith was a world junior speed skating champion. And he credits this location for his training, uh, for assisting him in his, his win at the time. So we'll get into, we'll finish the, the history while, that very short history, while it was actually in an arena. Uh, places like, like Eaton's that had three, 400 employees would have staff nights and this place would just be full of, of people so a very popular destination in the summertime it was used for concerts and if there was a a marching band rock star of the era it was john philip sousa and he held two sold out concerts here thousands of people this whole outside had as many people in it as in the building to listen to him play so it really really had an impact for its very short life um, that was in 1926 that uh, Philip Sousa was here. The heating system was called Reglo. And essentially, it was an open chimney pit with an open natural gas flame. And during a Halloween skate, a young girl lost her life because her flowy costume got caught uh, while she was trying to, to warm up. So that's kind of started a, um, a downfall for, for this rink. And then in 1928, it burns not to the ground, but anything that wasn't concrete uh, burned. And it, it never got rebuilt, uh, but was used as an outdoor rink a little bit for a few years and then generally um, left on its own to become what we call the rink ruins. Uh, I, I would suggest not coming here. Uh, one, it's private property, which is why I'm standing so far away. Uh, two, the rebar, there is rebar, uh, but if you see there are cracks right down beside every window opening and most of them you can see daylight from top to bottom held on by you know 100 year old exposed rebar so uh for your safety and for legal respect of the owners i wouldn't trespass this is about as close as you you want to come to this uh this building um to avoid all kinds of complications uh, so this one actually causes a heritage dilemma it was only an active rink 
from 1922 to 1928 in terms of a, a complete structure. It has been ruins for 80 years. So from a heritage point of view, to do something with it, there are calls to do something with this structure, but it was only a rink for, you know, six years. Do we restore it as that rink? Do we keep it intact as the ruins that people know of it for 80 years? What, what to do with it? Other reasons uh, for concern is that half of it now are in designated floodplain sort of wetlands. So in terms of development, there's not a lot that you can legally do without encroaching on, uh, on, on um, wetlands. So uh, an interesting spot. What its future holds? Really don't know. There's always been interest. There have been uh, engineering evaluations. As it stands, can't be used. It would have to be reinforced somehow. Um, but it's still here. And as long as it's still here, there's always a possibility that something can be done with it. So that was the Sunny Bray Rink Ruins on Donald Avenue.